Welcome back. So this lesson, what we're going to try and do is we're going to can change it so that we don't use the socket ID anymore whenever we actually join our server. Instead, we're going to start using a unique identifier this lesson. So we're going to try and have a look at how you can generate unique identifiers in code. And uh, next lesson, we're going to do the same from a database point of view. So let's just start by actually creating our own unique identifier in the code and return that instead of this socket ID that we are getting right now for our different clients. So I'll jump into my code right here. I'll go all the way to the back end first. And in the back end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that package called UUID. So now we have that installed and we can start actually creating our own unique identifiers in the code base right here. Now we're going to have a look at our chat service for now, because that's actually where when we add a client, we actually go and create the ID right here for the client using that string we're getting from the outside. And if, got, if you forgot that code, let's have a look. The ID that we're getting from the outside is actually the client ID, which is the socket ID whenever we add a new user using that nickname. Let's try and go back to the service right here. So this is where we want to change it. So instead of using this ID, we are going to just put in a unique identifier right here. How do we do that? Well, if we jump back to the browser right here and have a look inside the generated UID right here, the guide, and you can see that first we need to import this guy. So let's just go and do that in our code. I'll go to the very top and I'll import that. Let's just get rid of the JSON import. I don't need that anymore. Now with this available, what we can do is actually we can call this method right here and we can actually generate a unique identifier just by doing that. So we'll do it like this and put in parentheses because it's a method. And there we go. Now we have a unique identifier that we are putting into the client ID right here. And that's all we have to do. Now this will actually be saved as a client with a unique identifier instead of that socket ID. Next lesson, we'll change it again, but let's just keep it like this for now. If we go back to the front end, another thing I want to do is in the front end, instead of actually printing right now, I'm inside my chat component HTML file. I go down to the column where I print my hello nickname. I also want to start printing the chat clients ID. So I get that ID I just generated on the back end instead of the socket ID that I used earlier on to kind of show that the socket ID was changed. Sweet. Let's keep this for now. And let's see what happens if I go into my front end now and I join with John again and I actually do a send. You'll notice that nickname is already used. Well, yeah, I didn't clean up anything. So let's join with another user. Let's say Johnny instead. And let's try and join with that guy. And there we go. Now you'll notice that this ID is actually not the socket ID anymore. It's now a unique identifier that is generated on our backend. Of course, that breaks some of our code. We'll fix that in upcoming lessons. But now we just generated a unique identifier using this library right here. And there are other libraries like this out there. This was just the first one I came up with. So if you need some reason that you don't have a database that can generate a unique ID for you, then you can use library like this to generate some unique identifiers for your system. So I just want to kind of show you that guys, that if you were ever to to need that in your setup. So I think that's it for this lesson. Now we have a way to generate a unique ID and let's just go to the database and see if it actually worked there as well. Notice this was the socket ID we built the first time. And now we actually end up with a unique identifier here instead, which is, well, it's unique. That's one thing, but also we don't change this every time where we kind of join again. We can now start actually storing this unique identifier in our system later on. So that's it for this lesson. See you next time where we'll have a look at how we can do it in Postgres instead of actually doing it as our own setup. Have fun. Bye.